center of everywhere. It's Beneath the Surface with Sean Murphy and Corey Cooper. Welcome to another episode of Beneath the Surface. Ooh, very nice. <laughs> and we are on a road trip right now, myself and Tyler, the videographer, and normally Corey Cooper is on the podcast running the show, but he's at home doing really important things and I'm designing. Yeah. He's like, I don't know, running an entire business. No big deal. And so <laughs> no big deal. And I'm on the road and we're doing, we're dropping off boards to our ambassadors, doing photo shoots and video content and having a lot of fun. Today was high five. Today was uh, exceptionally insanely cool, but it started off stressful. Terrible. <laughs> Are we allowed to curse on here? Yeah, okay. just you know, yeah, sure. You can curse. So walk us through. Walk us through today. First of all, walk. You you knew I've been coming. I was going to come here a couple weeks ago, probably or more. So what? Walk us through your prep. What's going through your head? Chaos. Ca- chaos. Yeah. You get that email that you're coming, and it's just panic from that point on. Trying to figure out what what's gonna make the most sense, where the fish are biting best, where we're gonna not waste our time and your efforts. So just calling buddies, scouting as much as possible, trying to get out of work early, go in late, mm-hmm. and get everything dialed. And then you think you got it all figured out, and you show up, and Murphy's Law, we yep. we lose every fish under the sun. I think we went one for ten. These day and a half so Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's been tough but we we found the right one yeah and i have first of all i didn't mention your name sean stralo who cares sean (laughs) stralo and he's been and sean's been with us part of the company for as long as almost as long as i've been around um scam likely uh i met you uh, about eight years ago i I reckon probably on a photo shoot you were a rep for boat for a minute and best days of my life and now you're an ambassador and yeah. crushing it um so today we were we won't need to talk about where we were but you know what i don't think about sometimes and what you know our team doesn't think about is the effort that you guys it, we kind of gloss over it right like oh i'm just coming in town we're gonna right. shoot some snaps not a big yeah. deal in my mind it's like I'll, I'll get cool stuff of you no matter what but you guys take it seriously and yeah we were just with drew chacon same with him, man. Right. He like takes it serious. Yeah, does a ton of scouting, right. pre fishes, knows where the fish are, tries out different baits, knows what the weather and the tides are gonna do, and all that stuff. So, uh, last night we went out. I don't know where we were, Melbourne somewhere, deep in the Amazon. Yeah, Melbourne. there there was tarpon and yep. uh, snook. You lost it, <laughs> lost a big snook. Tyler lost a tarpon. Yeah. Brother lost a couple. It's bad. Mm-hmm. Bad, bad, bad. But today we went out and unlike fly fishing, I'm not, I don't want to talk negatively about, about fly fishing because it's, it's probably my favorite thing to shoot because mm-hmm. it's so beautiful. But not I, for me. I, I tend to not witness a lot of fish being caught when we fly fish. There's a correlation there. There's a correlation. <laughs> it's like, you know, so you were bait fishing today. 100%. Yeah. You won't see me with a fly rod ever. <laughs> Not once. So but that's because I like to catch fish. I don't like to look pretty. I, I, don't, I just want to get it done. And yeah. even then, sometimes you don't get it done. But that's right. We got it done today. We did. So walk us through. Walk us through today. Kind of tell us. Tell, first of all, tell us what your board is. Board of choices. Kind of why you like like to sup fish, mm-hmm. and kind of what your setup is. Everyone's a little bit has a little bit of a different scenario with their gear. So yeah, hundred percent. Tell us, 100%. tell us what your what your deal is. So my go to board from the get go has been the twelve foot Rackham, by far the most versatile board for the stuff I like to do. I normally go out, um, launch off the beach, look for tarpon. Rarely do I do the backwater stuff we did today. So my setup is going to be as simple as possible because when you're going through the surf, you flip, shit gets lost. You want minimal gear. Everything's got to be tied down. So uh, probably like a year and a half ago, maybe two years, boat came out with those high water packs. Mm -hmm. That let me have a waterproof 
backpack that I can take out. So I have more stuff in there now. But before it used to just literally be a pair of pliers, maybe a couple hooks and leader material. That was it. That was all I'd take on the board. And occasionally I bring a cast net. And that you was hit cool. me in the head with one today. I did. I, felt, I have two I eggs terrible. on the back of my <laughs> <laughs> I know you're seeing little Tweety birds go by. It was yeah. bad, but well, I did um, say I did say throw it as I did, on me, yes. and then the weights hit me right in the back of the head and almost yep. knocked me out. Yeah, so that was cool. There's lead weights on here. No, don't just come close. Don't worry about me. I'll, I'll oh, get well, you guys are gonna get hit. Go. You're gonna get One. Hit. But we got through it. We did. We got through it. We We're got... still here. So yeah, I like to rack them. Keep it simple. That's what I love most about paddleboard fishing. You don't need to fuel up the boat. You don't have to get a million things ready. Board, paddle, one rod, maybe a bucket of bait. That's it. It's easy. And you were telling me last night at dinner that, you know, we were talking about fishing on boards and you're telling me a lot of people that you see daily are still amazed about what what it what are you on and that the fact that you're oh, what yeah. are you standing on and how do you fish off of it clueless do you think you, you still feel like it's kind of in the large part yeah i feel like mass public doesn't know what's going on they can't believe you can stand on it they don't get how stable it is the idea of fishing from it is so foreign to them mm -hmm. it makes no sense and then you pull up to the beach with whatever you caught and they all lose their minds yeah so I'm sure some of those people might be out of towners, but yeah, and even locals are like, I can't believe you're catching 150 pound tarpon off. It's crazy a piece of foam, it, but it's crazy. And the I think the number one question I might be wrong. But one of the number one questions we get um, from everyone online or in surveys and stuff is, is it? They, they think it's hard. Is it easy to do? Can I? Is it? Can I? Will I fall off? Is you need a lot of balance. I would answer that two ways. If you're backwater Let's, fishing, it is easy and stable. You, no, anyone can do it. Mm -hmm. Literally anyone. It, even if you're 350 pounds, get the inflatable rack them. It'll hold you fine. It's the most stable board in the lineup. Um, if you're in the ocean and it's three to four foot and you're launching through the surf, that's a whole different animal. Mm -hmm. And that get you need experience or you're going to lose all your gear and it's not going to be fun. Yeah, and you're from Melbourne. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your area here and kind of for the people that aren't from Florida, the fisheries, what's around us, the different bodies of water, yeah. the type of fish you Absolutely. catch here. Yeah, so we're on the East Coast here in Melbourne. It's the Atlantic Ocean. And my favorite thing to do is target tarpon. So that's going to start in like typically June and go through about September. And those masses of fish are moving up the uh east coast on the atlantic side so you just pick a calmer day where you can get out through the surf maybe there's a west wind so everything's glassed off and you're just looking for free swimmers or fish on different uh species of bait so like pogies threadfin they'll all push through and you'll just see them crushing from 100 yards away 500 yards away you'll see tarpon going airborne and it's game on mm -hmm. and then <laughs> but that can be super frustrating as you know and then we have a whole um, Indian River Lagoon. We got the Banana River. We have Mosquito Lagoon to the north. It's mashing Inlet to the south. There's a ton of good um, inshore fishing with that. Snook on the flats, redfish, um, jacks. Today we fished like a mangrove canal, which will be loaded this time of year with all sorts of stuff. Today it was snook. Sometimes it's tarpon. Sometimes it's redfish. So it's pretty diverse here. Um, gets fished hard with everyone moving to this area but there's plenty of opportunity yeah and the spot we were in this today I, I, it was a low the tide was low mm -hmm. uh it was kind of a canal about uh, probably about 20 yards wide mm -hmm. or something about about like that and there wasn't any boats there because boats can't go in there they really there's actually. a little channel right there were some smaller boats on lifts but i was and i was like how are these boats getting in here i guess you have to wait for a high tide or is there yeah. like something but we didn't see any. We didn't see any boats we while lucky, we were yeah. fishing. And there were, it was so alive with just thousands of mullet 
how many sharks did we see? Like Too many. five thousand sharks. Too many bull sharks. Bull sharks. Lots of little. Swam it's like with a Jew for a minute. It's, it's like a yeah. You're all freaked out. I was in the water, of course. Sean has no fear. <laughs> I have all the fear. I have all the fear. And we got the most. And, and so we missed like three big fish. You were losing your mind. I thought you were gonna start crying. And then I, I told I you just calm down. We're gonna we're gonna yeah. happen. And then it happened. That and it was calm magical. And reassurance made it happen. It was magical. And yeah. we got the most amazing shots and um, we closed the deal. Um, so, what do you think about this afternoon? So, uh, there's another cool thing about this area. You're, tell us about what you're, where you and your family go. You don't just fish, you, you hang out with your family. You guys camp together. You do certain things and you guys oh, yeah. you have bo the boards. I've done a shoot with you with the. We had the uh, the wheel racks and the boards and all the mm -hmm. different things, and you guys camp where at Anastasia Park. Yeah, so that's north of here, probably like an hour and a half um, up near St. Augustine. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, family is everything to me. That's like a central pillar in my life for sure. Um, but yeah, we go camping, fishing. We're always doing stuff based around the water. We'll bring the paddle boards on the boat and go offshore and try wrecks and reefs. Um, take them out occasionally near like weed lines and stuff try and get dolphin we'll take the boards camping anywhere i i like to just paddle with a dog on the board some days mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just nice being on the water you kind of forget all the bullshit where's your dog my dog's probably sleeping right now okay. we, we might need to go get that dog old I mean, old just, dog covered you know, in fleas you know just people beat down bad. how old is your dog pushing 14 i think uh, she uh maybe we don't starting to get <laughs> deaf <laughs> You know what people like to see pictures of? Dogs. Dogs on boards and kids. Like we we fish. So yeah, to us we try. fishing is everything on these mm -hmm. boards. I mean that's I mean that's my life. Yeah. But we don't realize that most of the people in the country don't live on the ocean. No. Yeah. They're inland. You know, they're fishing lakes, they're yeah, they're camping, point. they're doing family stuff, they're using, right. you know, our docks and different you yeah, know, there's so many applications for for all of this stuff you know yeah. and that's that's what i really like about it and um but my favorite thing to do is to be down here fishing with my friends yeah <laughs> i feel paddle boarding is so stealthy so you end up seeing stuff you don't get to see on the boat because fish hear the boat coming like that's we right. saw so many manatees sharks were paddling over snook before mm -hmm. they spook out where if you're on a boat, all that stuff's sounding before you ever even mm -hmm. get close to it. So for me, the cool part is the visuals you get on the paddleboard because you're just so damn quiet. Yeah, and me and me taking pictures, you know, with my camera. La yeah. I mean, last night I'm just cruising around. I'm I'm literally riding over tarpon. There's birds. Yeah, it's insane. I never thought I'd be a much of a birder, but <laughs> yeah. now I'm like geeking out on because I'm I'm cruising right up on them. Like holy shit, there's birds that are moving. You know, yeah, they don't hear me. You're just one of right. one of the other animals in the nature. And yeah, nobody pays attention to you. So right. it's 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 amazing. Drew Chacon was, and I've been aware of pressure on fish like physical pressure like they feel the boat coming in and and, and, he, was ex line. and he was explaining to me about the you know in those small canals as fish can feel the pressure of the 100%. board and so we had you know we got we did good today we had three paddle boards in a small canal and you know didn't seem to be too big of a problem although i almost I blew it on a couple yeah you did that's but, life i mean dude you're fishing in mangroves yeah, I call it combat fishing. Combat snooker, <laughs> going left to right, under mangroves, over trees. Like it's if you land one, it's almost a miracle. Mm -hmm. There's just so much stuff for them to break you off on. It's so that's for, what makes it fun. So for anyone out there that's brand, I mean, you kind of I guess already went over it a little bit. For the brand new, brand new novice, it's never been on one of our boards you know just wants to pick it up and and try it out do you, it, the other question i get is inflatable or hardboard for me always hardboard yeah just because it tracks better if it's windy out you can cut through the wind better um but if you're tight on space or if like a lot of people go to the bahamas mm -hmm. from here they'll launch out of smash and shoot over the bahamas you can throw with the inflatable inside your boat and have a boat or a paddleboard to fish on in the bahamas so there's definitely upsides and downsides to both. You have the weight of the hardboard, and, um, but for me, it's always going to be a hardboard. Well, I, I mothership a lot boards, and and 
and I'm on folks' boats, and and, and I can it stresses them out when you have a hard board because it's banging around, it's oh, like yeah. dinging up their boat. And yeah, so, uh, inflatables you can just chuck them yeah. in. It's super rad and. I love the inflatable rack. Yeah. I mean, that thing is so stable. You can. I've had two people on it with dive gear and gone lobstering on it with my girlfriend. It's it's an absolute blast. But for me, chasing tarpon, you got to have that twelve foot rack. When you're out there chasing tarpon, what's your technique for when you hook? Do you just go on a sleigh ride or do you slow them down? At a certain, do you slow them down yeah, with a, a bucket? Question. What do you do with yeah. that? Yeah. So the tarpon are going to be on the ocean side anywhere from like 60 to like a buck 80 is probably the biggest I've hooked into. And you'll get pulled to Cuba like instantly. <laughs> so I learned the hard way a couple of times, like three mile paddles back to the beach. Um, got sick of that. And one day I had my bucket that had the bait in it accidentally got knocked over and it became like a sea anchor. And it created a lot of drag. And I was like, holy shit, this is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. So now I need, as soon as I hook up, I have a five gallon bucket attached to the board that I throw over. And that adds so much drag and keeps you maybe two, 300 yards off the beach while you're fighting that tarpon. So you're not getting pulled to God knows where. Yep. So that's the, the ticket. And you can add more drag. You can also fight the fish broadside on the board. If you point your rod off the front of the board, the nose tracks towards the fish and you take off like a mm -hmm. rocket. Mm -hmm. If you fight perpendicular, you'll stay broadside and you don't move as fast towards the fish. You can have more drag. Got it. And what is, um, lastly, what is your, how do folks see what you do? What's your Instagram? You always have, when I look at your Instagram, it's, I don't even believe it half the time. It's like, you know, What's the t the tuna y'all just caught? Eight hundred pounds or something like that? Yeah, I think six hundred. Six hundred. Six eight yeah. is counting. I mean, Jesus Christ! That was yeah. <laughs> tarpon, uh, tarpon, tuna. Uh, you're doing sword fishing for mm -hmm. quite a bit. Those yep. things are na jack nasty. I don't even think I'd try one of those on a paddleboard. They would come at you and start Neither would I. trying to kill you. They're one of the baddest fish in the sea. That's right. That's right. And you're trying to catch sailfish. You got a lot of still things still on the list. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. we got blanked on that, but mm -hmm. it'll happen. Mm -hmm. What did? What's your Instagram? Mine's Straylo. So S T R A Y L O W. Got it. You can check me out there. Got it. Well, I'm pumped, dude. We're gonna go get some food, and then we're going to Tyler. Just give me a thumbs up, and then we're gonna you go out. Food? We're gonna go out and do some some artistic photographs. I'm about to get sick with it. <laughs> All right, dude. Thanks a lot for joining us today. Absolutely, man. This and, is awesome. And thank you all for listening. And tune in next week for another episode of Beneath the Surface.